Hi, Kevin McDonald here and welcome to Success Sundays. I'm really excited about this week. I've been joined in the studio by Tina Cleary, who's going to be sharing with you all about her challenges, obstacles and successes in property. So Tina, thanks for joining us. Hi. For everyone listening in, who is Tina? What was Tina doing before property? Um, so i am got two daughters and I've been doing photography for 28 years and I enjoy it very much and photograph any like businesses, bumps, pregnancies, and now properties too, and anybody, people, anything people based. Right. So, literally, full time ph- photographer. Full time, yeah. Um, working from home. Yeah, I have a home studio right. and work on location as well, and all over the country. Right. And then you're doing all these photographs of bumps, bumps, babies. Business, yeah, business uh, businesses. Headshots. Headshots. Yeah. Um, what made you decide? I'd like to get started in property investing. Um, there was a couple of things. My parents have properties. Then I reread Rich Dad Poor Dad, which my dad got me to read when I was quite young, and I reread it. I'm fed up. Got fed up with never having a reg. My income is like this, and yep. basically, I wanted to have a regular income and I wanted to make money while I sleep. For a typical photographer income. When you say your income's up and down, what what does a photographer typically make? It's a difficult one. Like. Um, one month it could be a couple of grand you could have a good month and maybe make two and a half grand and then another month it might be slower and it could be 800 but your bills are always two two grand so the bills are fixed but the income could be below or above yeah yeah yeah. a lot of people listening to this will go that's great for you mom and dad are multi-millionaire property (laughs) investors it was easy for you um what's the reality uh, the reality is uh, mum and dad lost their house in one recession. They lost everything. Um, they lost it again when a uh, drink driver broke dad's, both dad's arms and legs. They built themselves up again um, and they've had no easy journey. And then when I said I wanted to get into property, because they're landlords, they were actually a bit worried for me because um, landlords don't get treated well by the government mm. and what have you. So And obviously the recession wiped them out previously and they're worried about... Yeah, and they were worried, yeah, because they haven't come to know money down and listen to these techniques, yeah. Right, so um, how did you find Progressive? I read that book again, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I just must be getting an email from Progressive, I don't even know how, and then I see this, like, Irish man with this, like, Irish, like, hat on advertising St. Patrick's Day um, (laughs) summit, (laughs) and I did the online one, and, yeah, and it it was just you with a little Irish hat on. I I remember that. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, that that was because... I couldn't get to Ireland for St. Patrick's Day. So I thought, well, I'll celebrate St. Patrick's Day with a bunch of people online instead. We had a virtual Guinness. I remember that was yeah. that was 2023. Um, 22? That probably was 20, 23. 23, yeah. March 23. Yeah. So yeah. it would have been 18-ish months ago. Then you came here to Progressive Life. Yep. Then I come and watched you for real at the summit. And I was like, I'm definitely not going to sign up to a course. And then I signed up to the free day. And then I was like, I'm definitely not signing up to the mastermind. And then I signed up to the mastermind. And I'm very, very glad I did. You, you said something really interesting as well. You said when you came to our event, you said, I'm definitely not joining the training. I'm definitely not getting mentoring. And then you went and did it anyway. So what was the, what was in your head? What made you decide I'm going to do it? And and why, why were you first thinking I'm not? And then why okay. did you just change your the mind? The reason I thought I wasn't was because I'd invested a lot in my photography business and I'd pay, I had a lot of coaching. So I'd set a goal for the year that I was having no more coaching in my planner every year. I get a new beautiful planner. But of course, property was a different thing. I will never regret doing this because I feel that nothing would have ever changed because I have tried so many things to have a more income uh, yeah. in my main job or what was my main job. Um, I'll always do photography now, but I think photography will be for the holidays, the pocket money, and the property will be to pay the bills. Coming to know money down, watching everybody tell their stories on stage, and, and you knew that they were real, I don't know, you just knew they were real people, not fakes pulled out of the audience, and seeing what they'd done. And one particular lady, Rachel, had loads of children, about four children, and a cleaning business, and she was managing to do it. You could see Rachel that you, Downer. Yeah, yeah which yeah. I ended up uh, photographing her essay last week, actually. <laughs> Um, and yeah, she really inspired me. Everyone inspired me, but I particularly remember me and my daughter talking to her. For your photography business, um, just actually being in the network and property, the transferable skill, and I talk a lot about people having transferable skills. Yeah. And the transferable skill, everybody really has some sort of transferable skill. And 
you, I mean, you were a photographer in a property community for people who need photos taken all the time. And sometimes, I, like, I want to actually grab people in the audience and shake them and go, do you realize what you have as a transferable skill and the room and what they need? So how soon did you realize your photography was a transferable skill that you could offer the service to other investors as well as an additional income stream? Well, there was a lovely lady I was chatting to quite early on, Heidi, you know. Heidi and she, yeah, yeah, and she said quite quickly, you should be doing that. Um and kept hearing that message, but um, I wasn't, I think because I photograph people, mm. um, I wasn't pushing myself to get out there, but now it's happening naturally, yeah. What would you say to anybody who's thinking about getting started in property? What would you say to people? To just do it. I mean, my parents, when they said to me, they were a little bit concerned. I actually told them they're the ones that inspired me um, to see how property has helped them. Um, It can be scary. Um, It definitely can be scary, but it's even scarier staying still and nothing changing. And I would bring my daughters here, which I already have bought one. And I, hand on heart, would just say do it because it is life changing. And I feel there's light at the end of the tunnel and... It's the best, one of the best things I've done and in its returning on investment. Um, How many years were you a photographer? I've been doing it 28 years. And in 28 years, your income went from standing start zero to two and a half-ish grand on a good month? Yeah, yeah. There was the odd month, maybe three-ish, but it's yeah. it's just a roller coaster of, um, you just get loads of work one month and then another month's quieter and just. And from your properties, once you've got the, you, you've got a couple going through at the moment now. Yeah. In sort of 18 months since you attended that online training, your first introduction to just showed up for a webinar. What will, you, once those are, those are n- the latest deal is up and running, what roughly will be your income? Well, the first deal, that one alone will be bringing me in 2,300 a month. So just the first just deal? Just the one, one property. Income or profit? profit the second one i'm managing for a landlord so that one at the moment is about 500 she's going to give me another one next month and again that's only month one so you can make a loss some people in would you so are you on sort of four or five grand a month once Um, yeah once it's all up i'd say uh three dot six of 18 yeah it should be just under four grand just under four grand a month yeah so i guess 20 28 years as a photographer yeah, you got to two and a half grand a month, and that's a, on a more good months. And in eighteen months from a standing start in property with no money, you've surpassed that and got to well, a, just under four grand a month. But to be honest, yeah, I mean, just I've only been at my, I only came here last July, so really in a year, in, in twelve months, yeah. So in twelve months, you've already surpassed that. The thing is, a lot of people will watch this and they'll go, "Um, it was okay for Tina. Was it okay for you? Was it easy, or have you had challenges?" Yeah, I think I've had challenges. I think it actually helped, like, not having the money because, like, how you train us, so sometimes money can be a distraction. Um, and I think that first deal was quite a scary deal. When I look back, I think, my God, you know, like, um, and I think that need for it made, made me push harder. When I look back at I just think, wow, that was quite a risk, really. But you teach us how to look at the deal, make sure it's safe and do our due diligence. But nevertheless, I look back and think, oh, I don't know. Do you think, apart from the deals and the income, have you become a stronger person mentally? I definitely am learning every day. 18 months ago, seen me in a crazy Irish shot, uh, hat on St. Patrick's Day. Shot, I almost said, that's a drink. Um, 12 months ago, came and did some live training here. Been mentored for the last 12 months. Got to four-ish grand a month in income. What's next? Um, legacy so at the moment it's been rent to rents for cash flow um, legacy and two things I wanted to help with is people getting on the ladder because I took a long time to get on the ladder and I felt it'd be very difficult for my daughters to and people that lose their houses to um, recessions because I've witnessed what that can do and um, so helping people which is what you train us all about, is helping people whilst helping yourself and creating win-win situations. But uh, legacy, so it's buying now. So thank you, Tina. That's been awesome. So guys, if you've enjoyed today's interview and you want to find out more property content and stay up to date with the latest property knowledge, then make sure you like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future episodes. 
I've been Kevin McDonald. Tina has been Tina. You've been awesome. And we'll see you next week on Success Sundays. Uh-huh.